Welcome back to another video, it's Bath City v Colchester United match reaction. Let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments down below. What a win, what a massive win. I mean, the performance, we'll forget about that. I don't want to talk about that, to be honest. It was were, it were poor performance, but who cares? You know, if you want to go up and you want to at least come in the playoffs, but if you want to, you know, get in the top three, you've got to be winning games when you don't play well. You've got to be winning your home games, and you've got to... Um, you know, just you've got to fight to the end and score last minute winners and I were worrying that we were gonna draw nil nil, um, or even concede in the last minute to to their, to a quarter header from them. Um and it was just gonna be one of those games at Valley Parade where we don't win, we don't take advantage of um, you know, a Stevenage losing to Watchdale, um, you know, and, and we don't to make that leap and that progression that we need to make in you know, to be in the top seven and to, you know, push for top three. Um, so it's them type of games that you need to get through and win. Is it what, two defeats in 12, two, two defeats in 11? It's a fantastic one. Three wins in a row. Andy Cook's resurgence has been unbelievable. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think... We, we, we thought... He, we obviously know how good he is. Obviously last season he had a pretty decent season. And then this season he, he proved us all wrong, you know, pretty much since, it, you know, from August to what, October. It, it was unbelievable then. And then he went out the team and maybe we thought, well, he shouldn't have been dropped, some thought. And then others thought, well, um, you know, let's see what, what he's made of. Let's see if it does motivate him. And the bloody hell, and it motivated him. Motivated him. He's, he's been fantastic. Um, you know, he's had seven goals in six or eight goals in seven. Um, the, the only game he didn't score in, what that we've lost when he's been playing, is obviously Barrow. Um, so when Andy, don't, when Andy Cook don't score... Bath City simply just don't win because we don't have any goals coming from anywhere else. It's good to see that Banks scored, but obviously it took until you know the game to probably open up a bit. Daytime waste the hell out the game. Um, you know it was good. To, it's good to see passion, you know, from our players and from the coaching staff as well. You know, I, I, I've got to say that I love Mark Hughes. I love Glenn Hodges. I love these. Well, the majority of these players. I love our fans. You know that they are fantastic. Um, the atmosphere wasn't the best today. I thought the northwest corner, were, you know, they they were very good. Um, you know, I've, you know, they get a lot of criticism, but uh, you know, to be fair, they were pretty good today. Um, you, you know, I'll give I'll give them a five out of five. But um, <laughs> you know, I, I I think the atmosphere wasn't that good. But that's because the performance was were poor. That first half, you know, it it was terrible. We probably didn't want to complain because you know we've done that before this season, and then, we, and then we've gone and won probably like today. Um, and then the second half we improved a bit, but it took until probably the 75th, 70th minute to really get going. Um, so yeah, I thought we were poor and we, we were heading towards that barrel, barrel game until maybe we, we turned the corner and, uh, and and actually won at home when we didn't do well and uh, got two goals out of nothing and won the game the last minute. And uh, you know, it is, it's a fantastic way to win. And it's, it's like winning in the playoffs, you know, it's a fantastic way to win when you win. Um, but it's also, you know, an awful way to go out if you if you concede it later on as well. So, it's a fantastic win. Um, we had 16 shots today, 9. And we only had 3 shots on target and obviously scored 2. Um, they only had 4 shots on target as well. We had 58% possession and we played around 100 more passes than them. And had a slightly better pass accuracy as we probably expected. Um, we had quite a few sh shots that were blocked and no way that came of them. Um, you know, and we couldn't we couldn't create chances again. We struggled against a low block uh, to create chances, and you know, I, most of us know. But Smallwood, Gilead, Clayton can't play in a midfield three um, at, at home because they, they haven't got the creativity, and you know, they, they, they haven't got that to to play at home. There's not enough balance in there. Whereas away from home. Uh, it gives us more defensive solidity and it, it enables us to plan the count a bit as well. So I, I think definitely the next home game, we've got to concentrate on Tuesday now. You know, Walsall away is going to be a tough game. I don't know what they did today, but, um, you know, that's that's not going to be easy. Um, I, I think that, yeah, they lost today, Walsall, and uh, that they are on a good run. So we've got to be winning that as well. We've got to be beating these teams who are down to us, bottom of the table, or are on a bad run of form. And uh, Walsall, Walsall are one of those as well. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've got to bounce back to that. But next home game, is it uh, is it Hartlepool? I, I don't know if it is. But um, we've got to we've got to be winning that. Um, I think next week, it's I think we've got two away games on the bounce. Next week, I think it's Newport. And then I think we've got Hartlepool. So, we've got to change it up then. Because today, it's it's a, it's a, it's a you know, it's um, we've got to learn from our errors. And, you know, it, it's... 
I forgot what the bloody word is, but and we've got to learn from our errors. We, you know, we can't keep playing the diamond at home. We can't keep playing small with Gilead and Clayton at home because, you know, today proved it didn't work. But we we got over the line, and that's what we've got to do. Uh, but defensively, I thought we were really good again. And I'll get into play, player ratings in a bit. Uh, do yours on the community tab. It's 1 out of 5. I keep doing one, um, 1 out of 10, but I will change, and I've, I've got it in my head, but it is 1 out of 5. Um, in terms of the league table last year, uh, to come third, you needed 23 wins. Um, and we, uh, how many wins have we got now? I think we've got 16. So really, we need around six more wins. Uh, no, we don't. That, that's terrible maths. Um, we need around seven more wins um, to to be getting in the top three, um, which is a big ask. But there's some very we, there's some fixtures there that we've got to be winning. And um, I, I think I remember Mark Hughes saying before Christmas that his teams. Got you know with the the train, you know to be all right in the first season, but then to push on the second season, that's what he plans to do. And I think, obviously, Fergie did that quite a bit at Manchester United. The momentum kicked on through into uh, the second half of the seasons, and that that's what we've got to do this season as well. Um, and that is what we're doing this season because um, I think since we played Mansfield on on the fourth, we we've gone on an unbelievable run um, where. By, I think we've had 15 points from our, from from a possible 18. So yeah, we're on a fantastic one, and we've got to keep it up. But yeah, to to come seventh last season, you need 22 points, uh, 22 wins, and to come third, you need 23. So we still, you know, we've still got a long way to go. We've still got a few more games to go as well. But this time last season, we were 15th. Um, I think we played. Is that one game less? I, I think we played one game uh, more. Last season we were 15 for 9 wins and 40 points. We've now got um, 57 wins um, and and six and uh, fi got 57 points and 16 wins. So you know that that improvement's clear to see, and uh, it goes to show that you know if we didn't go on that run, but we've been going on recently, we would have been in trouble in terms of you know trying to get into a top seven and getting top three. But I'm starting to believe a bit more now, as long as Mark Hughes realises his mistakes and learns from them as well. We, we can't keep playing like that at home, um, otherwise it will cost us against the team. But, you know, probably we'll take the chances because Colchester had two or three really good chances, one-on-ones, what they should have scored. Um, but, yeah, if it weren't for Mark Hughes and David Lewis, we wouldn't have won that game. But, um, you know, that, that, that that's what will get you out of, of this division. Um, so on to the player ratings. You can vote for yours in the community tab in your man of match, or you can just tell me in the comments down below and tell me what your thoughts on the game were on the co in the comments down below as well. Um, in that massive uh, two 0 win, um, unbelievable! Took two goals in in three minutes. It's unheard of. If we got like the first six minutes, that would have been a lot better for us to take. But uh, yeah, a few heart races, uh, a few heart attacks potentially. You know, um, but you know what could have occurred. But um, anyway, into a player ratings, Harry Lewis gets a 4 out of uh, 5. I think, obviously, that means that he had a very good game. Um, not quite 5 out of 5. I mean, you could give him 5 out of 5. Um, but he, he had a fantastic game, made a couple of really good saves as, again, and probably kept us in the game. Uh, you know, I thought he was really good again today. Uh, Brad Allardy gets a 3. I thought he was OK. I thought at times he were 4, um, but then at times he were 2. I thought... Um, you know, he, he he had an okay game today. I think um, obviously, Gillingham Doncaster were fantastic in them, um, and I still thought he had a, a, a decent game. Um, you know, it's not a bad game, but uh, yeah, a three out of five for me. Um, Matty Platt gets 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 a four out of five. I thought he was fantastic today. I thought he was really good. Um, you know, man of match. Uh, it's tough to say man of match ahead of Andy Cook, but. I thought he were really good. I thought he stood up to um, their striker really well. Um, dealt with uh, the physical battle that he had. Stepped out of the fence well as well. I think his distribution of the ball can be better. I think that's something that we maybe thought we were getting earlier on in the season. But a good ball playing defender and he clearly isn't that. And he probably does have to play the ball out quicker. Um, but yeah, I thought he read the game really well today. And I, I thought... Um, yeah, I thought he had a good game, you know, first to everything. Uh, Sam Stubbs as well gets a 4 out of 5. I thought he had a good game as well. Very similar to Platt, but Platt edges it. I thought he had to deal with more down his right side. M maybe Allardy left him open a bit more, but obviously Allardy don't get any support down that right flank either. I think um, I saw Mark Hughes having a real pop at Scott Banks for not getting out to him and helping him uh, once and uh, he had a real go at him. And that's what I like about Mark Hughes as well. Is he gives that passion and when, when we scored that uh, first goal, 
you know, you'll you'll see it somewhere, and, you know, the, the, the moves his hands very quickly upwards um, towards the midland, uh, towards the main stand, and he gives that passion. He's always, you know, when when you see him on the away games, giving it to the away fans, and then, he's, you know, him and Dodge is always in the officials' ears, and um, you know, when you look at previous managers, probably since. Um, Stuart McCall, you know, you don't have that passion, and you know, he will, he does love the club. You know, when you when you listen to him, he does, and he's managed loads of clubs, play, played at big, um, played for big clubs, managed for big clubs, and uh, you know, he, he's took Bath City on, you know, with the full, um, with, with all of his heart. So you've got to praise him for that, and uh, you know, I, I, I like, I, I do like him as a man, but um, as, as a manager, sometimes it can be infuriating, but. He obviously knows more than us. I think the Chapman sub obviously changed the game on Banks, and you know he did see what we saw, and they brought Smallwood and Gilead off because Wonder looked tired. I'll get I'll get onto them in a bit, but they looked tired, and they were winning that midfield battle, and those subs probably did change the game. Um, but on Liam Wide out, he uh, gets a three out of five again, very similar to Holiday. His delivery were poor. He gets a two out of five. Sorry, because. I thought he's, he's, he had more chances to get good balls into a box and, you know, uh, three times out of ten, you know, there were poor balls in. You know, when you've got Cook in the box and Costello who were um, doing well to get on some of the crosses that were put in. Um, you know, we had a few players in there and some of them didn't hit any of the targets and then defensively thought it was OK. But, you know, going forward, it, it should have been better uh, for me. And maybe we consider bringing Talaji Bolo in for the next couple of games. But I think Rydell, Smallwood, Gilead, you know, um, and that and that Diamonds, it's it's good for away games because they're more defensive players and um, we set up really well defense, t defensively in the away games and can counter well. But home games, you know, you need attacking wing-backs to, to play the Diamond. Uh, you need more energetic players in midfield who, who are creative. You know, maybe even I'd even consider if you if you stick with a diamond and consider Chapman and Osadebi either side, um, you know, of Clayton and Walker in that diamond because they offer width and creativity and more energy um, than maybe Gilead and Small would do. Um, but on Gilead and Small, I might as well tell you, Matt, now to, um, Small gets a two out of five and so does Gilead. I thought, like I said earlier, I'm not going to talk about them too much because I've covered it a lot because I thought they were just problems. For, of our first half and first half of the second half, I thought they they, they offered no creativity. Um, I thought East coming on as well changed the game a bit. Um, you know, and they, they just looked tired. They, they didn't get back quick enough, and that comes with playing. You know, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday for the last couple of weeks, and we're playing Tuesday again on, against Walsall, um, which is good to have these games because Christmas period and just after in January um, and just before Christmas we, we were getting games cancelled you know left right and centre and that's why doing and Walsall um, these games now that they, they, they're coming thick and fast um, I, I would probably consider maybe taking them out or um, you know rotating a couple of players because they aren't going to be fit for those games um, but yeah I thought they were poor on the ball and, and off it they didn't offer as, as much either so good subs um, for Mark Hughes to recognise that because they are his favourites and he could quite easily have been stubborn and kept them on. Um, Clayton, I thought, 3 out of 5, I thought he controlled the game well, like he always does. Um, you know, I, I don't think he quite protected Platt and uh, Stubbs as well as he could have. I thought we, we were caught out um, in, that, in that midfield three um, too often. But um, yeah, I thought he had an OK game. Uh, Jamie Walker again, a 3 out of 4. He had, maybe out, some would probably give him a 2 as well because I thought... He was okay, but he didn't create enough when he had the ball. Um, you know, he didn't do enough with it, and that that's that's something that I'm sure he'll want to you know do more on. But Joingham, um, I, I didn't really see him do much against Doncaster either. You know, uh, since that um, that that game where uh, was it Stevenage? Um, I, I think it was that um, he, he, he scored two. I think he was really good in that game and. Since then, you know, he's fallen off a bit again, and maybe that comes from, you know, coming back from injury, maybe about a month or ago, a month or so ago, and uh, you know, relentless games, he, he's lost that creative edge to him, and I, I think, you know, maybe resting for Walsall because I don't think he looked quite at it again today, and there was talk of him potentially being injured as well. Um, front two, Fort Costello, three out of five. I thought he was okay again, maybe. Um, he could have contrib contributed more creatively. Probably could have drifted, you know, to the flank a bit more. But when he does get the ball, he's he's really good, and he does find space well. I think he's got a really good technical head, you know, a good footballing brain. But 
it's actually, you know, with his age and experience um, probably showing that he hasn't quite got it yet. But he, he knows what he wants to do in his head, he just can't do it. Um, but yeah, he's, he looked bright and I thought he had an OK game, but, um, you know, he's it, the type of player you don't want to bring off because you feel like he could do something. But, um, yeah, it was probably the right call to bring him off because Banks came on and Chapman came on and provided us that bit more um, end product for once. Chapman, fantastic ball into Andy Cook, who got the goal on his 100th game and, you know, some are calling for a statue and, you know, you've got a good shout for it because he, he has been fantastic. Could again new contract. I won't give him it yet because I do feel like that motivation, um, you know, you've got to keep that fire in his belly. I think you've got to... Um, keep him motivated so I won't give him it yet but he's been fantastic and he just knows where the back of the net is he knows where to be and you know he's, he's been in a bit of a graveyard shift you know he hasn't had a lot to do but he feeds off scraps and you know when he does get half a chance he takes it and you know he's, he's fantastic and um, you know he's definitely a league one footballer um, and and again he probably will make that step up even if we don't um, but that's my player ratings let me know yours in the community tab or in the comments down below and your thoughts on the game um, but like I say, I think we've got to learn from this game, and uh, the next home game, I think it is Hartlepool, we've got to improve, um, because that's probably, you, you know, like like I say, it's a scare, we've got to learn from that, otherwise we, we'll probably lose that game on another day, um, you know, Colchester weren't great, they didn't take the chances, um, but they, they'll probably be safe, they'll probably stay up, they've got enough quality, and you know, there's probably going to be these two worst teams in the division. But Rochdale did us a favour by beating Stevenage. So the, that you know, there's three points between us and third now. There's also two points between us and eighth. So you know, it's really opened up. But hopefully, we can keep winning. That's all. We've just got to concentrate on us and keep that momentum ticking over. Because I think we we, we probably will be in the top seven if we can keep it going. But like I say, we've got to learn from our mistakes if we want to be up there come the end of the season. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Have a good one.